Hey guys, it's Casserole, and welcome back to The Operator. So, um, I love this game, and I think you guys did too. Um, I only had, like, one like at the time of this recording, but, um... I played the demo on this and really enjoyed it, and since there was at least one person interested in seeing me continue this game, and since I love this game anyway, I decided I wanted to continue playing it. I don't know if it's going to be any different than the demo uh, for the first part, so I want to start from the beginning um, just to get a refresher on what we played through the demo, because it has been a little bit since we played the demo. Um, so we are going to do a new game and start from there. Starting a new game will erase your progress. Do you really want to continue? Yes, I'm, I'm good with that. Because I want to experience this game in its whole. Biome facility somewhere in the U.S. 1992. You answer my questions as you I will do this correctly this time. Yes, two for no. Do you understand? One for yes. Two for no, so yes, we. Extraterrestrial life? Oh, we do not. Are you currently restrained? Yes, we are. Are you married? Yes. Yeah. Oh, no, we're not. That was do a hesitant no. In law enforcement? No, we do not. Do you know who I am? No, I do not. Do you know who you are? Think so? Yes. Are you Why did it bleep out my name? Good. He's ready. Why did it bleep out my name? Did it bleep out my name last time? I don't remember it bleeping out my name last time. The operator. <laughs> I'm excited. I love this game. This game is so much fun. FDI headquarters. Washington, D.C. 7.30 a.m. Okay. Does that say moon? I can't read that last one. Oh, here we go. We are Evan Tanner. Okay. Not good. Secure and monitored federal government. Hi. You are assigned to the operator program. Please read the following document before proceeding. Welcome to the Operator Program. The Operator Program has been specifically designed to provide technical support to field agents, henceforth abbreviated as agents, while also ensuring a high-level confidential. Agents call the hotline. The call is dispatched to secretaries who verify the agent's identity, clearance level, and request. The request is forwarded to the supervisor. The supervisor dispatches the call to an available operator a direct line is established between the agent to the operator. Once the operator fulfills the agent's technical request, the line is closed. Okay. We're at the bottom of the line. Hey, pal. Hi. How you holding up? Good. Get all that booze out of you? Booze? I'm sorry, I'm not following? What? You seriously don't remember? No. You wanted to celebrate your new job, and I quote, ahem, properly. Well, Ripper. I'm happy you're here. You and me at the FDI together. It's really great. But I gotta tell you something. Mm -hmm. When we're on the job, I can't treat you differently than anybody else. Fair enough. You understand, right? Of course, Mike. I mean, a director, Trench. Sure, by the way, how much does this pay? And I guess the tables have turned. Okay, let's just... Of course, Mike. Good. Well, I'd better run. The FDI can't run itself now, can it? Good luck with your first day. Thank you. Alright. Alright. Thanks. Talk to you later, Mike. Secure line is closed. Alright. Hello, Skinner. Good morning. Good Mr. morning. Tanner. 
Welcome to the FDI. I assume you're up to speed on your mission here at the Operator Program? Uh, I read the Welcome document. You know the basics. Good. So, just to recap, your job is to support our agents by providing them with all the help they need in the field to solve a case. Mm -hmm. That help can come in the form of fact-checking, video and audio analysis, even lab work. My job as a supervisor is to link the agents with an appropriately matched operator. Any questions? Nope. Fine, but first you need to learn how to respond to an agent's request. Let's do a dry run, shall we? Okay. I want you to find my age. Okay. This objective just popped up at the top left of your screen beside the applications menu. See it? Whenever mm -hmm. you're stuck or if you need help, simply click on the question mark next to the objective. Okay. Go on and click on the question mark, Tanner. I mean, I don't need help, but okay. Yes, just like that. You can always click on the question mark if you get stuck, though I'm hoping this won't happen often. Well, I'm getting not access too. to the human database. The human mm -hmm. DB, as we call it here. Human DB. You can find this and other tools to help you solve agent requests in the applications menu. Now go Sorry. ahead. Operator Tanner. Solve Operator my request. Tanner. Find my age. When you find the answer, click on the objective and then select the answer on the screen. Okay. Objective, then the answer. Okay, not that. Uh, applications. Human DB. I want Xavier Skinner. Okay, click on that, then his age. Right, Kay. like that, Tanner. I'll let you get settled in. And I'll contact you later with your first real request. Okay. Of course, Supervisor Skinner. <laughs> X-Files Skinner. <laughs> that's, that's the first thing that pops into my head when I see Skinner, is X-Files. I never actually really watched X-Files, but my dad was big into it, so I know of it, and a lot of it. Well, maybe not a lot of it, but still. Yes, sir! Tanner, looks like your first request is somewhat of a baptism by fire. Okay. I have an agent working a homicide. It's her first case, too. Not ideal, but consider this a learning experience. Okay. I'll be monitoring you in the background. Looking forward to the challenge, sir. I'm patching the agent through now. Okay. Hello. It's Operator Tanner, right? Yes, ma'am. I don't think our paths ever crossed at the Academy, did they? Anyway, I got a homicide at a bar downtown called The Sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Ironic, no? My Vic, dead on arrival, is male, Caucasian, early 60s. He was shot in the head at close range around 2 a.m., just before closing time. Mm -hmm. As far as evidence, I got some surveillance footage from the bar, and uh, some kind of list that I found on the deceased. Any chance you can work your operator magic and help find me an ID on the shooter? Do my best. Thanks, operator. Okay, I'm sending over the files. Good luck. Alrighty. Here we go, let's see if I can remember it. Alright, so we've got... Name list. That's the list I found on the victim. It's pretty long. And to be honest, I got no idea who any of those people are. The bizarre thing is, that name at the bottom, it wasn't redacted when I bagged it. But I think it's irrelevant to our shooting here. Okay. You think it's irrelevant and yet it's got the circles. So many circles. Okay, sure. This is our cutting edge video analysis system, Tanner. Okay. Click on any relevant elements in the video to trigger an analysis. Go on, give it a whirl. Okay. Just like with the video, you can click on a photo for further analysis. Okay. I said you remember that we had to get the license plate, so... 
free will. I believe Ray Wells is our killer. The, the car belongs to Ray Wells. Hi. Now we know the perp's name. You got something for Wells' address? Because I'll take it if you do. We got the address right here. Nope. Yeah, we I don't think that's don't right. Got operator. the address. <laughs> Looks like it's the address for a car dealership. I don't Oops. think Wells lives on the lot. What okay. I'm looking for is Wells' nope. home address. That's not Did what you check that down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Give me a second. I'm getting to it. Way Wells. Oops. And yes, I am actually typing in that stuff. So let's place birth. Last known address. Address. All right, one thirty Laurel Street. Yeah, that'll do. Nice Cul work. Next up is to bring Wells in. I'll keep you updated. Cold pepper. Thanks, Operator Tanner. No problem. Oh, just doing my job, Agent. Not bad, Tanner. Not great, but not bad either. Yeah, I'll sorry. You later with your next request. Understood. What do you mean, not bad? No need to worry, operator. You'll improve with time. Is it because I made one little mistake? I sorry. I made one mistake. <sighs> so picky. <laughs> Here we go. FDI Most Wanted. Please consult the latest FDI Most Wanted list. Fred Smorkinski? Smor... Smor... Okay. Uh, Wilson Boulder. Yes, sir. Hello. Tanner, I need you to follow up on an investigation started by a previous operator. Okay. I'll let the agent working the case bring you up to speed. Okay. Of course, Supervisor Skinner. Hello. Oh, please. Tell me you got something. Um, sorry, I don't understand. God damn it! Who are you? Operator trainer at your service. Great. Every goddamn time we get a new operator, it takes me twice as long. Sorry. I got a life outside the FDI, you know? Interest, hobbies, full blooded passions. Mm -hmm. I don't have time for this. I'm sorry. Can you tell me about the case? I got a missing persons case out here in Dryville, okay. Nevada. No, I remember this one. Her name. I canvassed the area, talked to the locals. Mm -hmm. I can't believe I'm saying this, but everyone thinks she was abducted by aliens. Dryville, Nevada? Middle of nowhere. Hot as hell. Sandy. Mm -hmm. Calling it a small town would be an insult to small towns. People actually think aliens were involved? Look, I think it's bonkers, too. Another weird thing is, over the past year, four people in Dryfield have claimed they've been abducted. Mm -hmm. And every single time they reappeared somewhere in the middle of the desert out here about a month later, Connie's story's the same. I thought she was missing. She was. Popped back up yesterday. Collected her testimony myself. She had a camera on her. Mm -hmm. Naturally, I like to look at the photos. But to do that, I gotta go through you, an operator. Okay. Lucky me, right? What am I looking for? There's something off about all this. Mm -hmm. I mean, beyond all the talk of little green men, just look for something that doesn't add up, okay? And I remember what it is, so... Um, your request is my command. Let's go. I'm on it. Here are the files. Thank you, sir. All right. So I do remember that um, I am not going to read all of this. If you want to read or listen to me read all this, you can go back and watch the demo of it. I do read out all of this, but I do remember that the um, discrepancy was in the date, if I remember correctly. Reappearance on 3-5. 
and she said that, oh, where was it? Yeah, I'm not sure, but I know that it is the consistency is the date. Photo was taken 221, 1992, 16 days after her disappearance. Jackpot. Connie said she took that photo the day she disappeared. Clearly, she didn't. Maybe the aliens did funny things to her brain. Maybe her brain was funny to begin with. Do me a favor. Locate the position on the map where she supposedly snapped this photograph. Okay. Find photo location. Oh, crap. Um... Wow. What is that? All right. Now check this spot out. I guess I gotta do a little hiking. Probably sweat my goddamn b b b b b <laughs> And here's the hack. How do you know my name? Who the heck are you? Uh, who the heck are you? My name is Hal. That was supposed to be pretty obvious by now. Didn't you see my cool graphics? What do you want? It's simple. I want the truth. What are you talking about? Let me show you something. Do you remember the list found on Henry Jenkins? Uh, yes. I think so. It's the guy that got shot. You remember Henry Jenkins? Don't you? Evan? No, I guess you wouldn't. You didn't even bother analyzing him in the footage from the bar. You didn't see her name, did you, Evan? Oh, the abducted woman. Pretty big coincidence, don't you think? I'm also going to assume that you didn't notice that of the 136 people on it, 122 have been reported missing. I didn't notice, no. One last thing, and this is the most important part. There's a name near the bottom that's been redacted. That name is the key to understanding everything. I have to go now, Evan. But I'll be in touch soon. Promise. Don't go! Tell me more! Oh. Okay. That was it. <laughs> okay. Okay. Operator Tanner, are you there? Yes. Agent Walker told me that your connection was suddenly cut. Yes. And when I tried to contact you, you were offline. What happened? Okay, so it does open up right where the demo stopped. That's cool. So if you did play through the demo, then you can pick up right where you left off and 
keep going with the story. Um, should I tell him the truth or should I lie? Let's tell the truth. Let's be honest with our Al, boss. I thought we had taken care of that problem. I will look into this matter immediately with our cybersecurity department. The second shift of operators has arrived. You can go home now, Tanner. See you tomorrow. Okay. And don't be late. See you tomorrow, Supervisor Skinner. Power off. Shutting down. Okay. We did it. We completed our first day. <laughs> yeah. So the demo ended at the hack. So I knew everything up to that hack. Um, hello? Oh, we were in an elevator? Why is it up blurry? Why, why is our vision blurry? I can't see. I can't see. Oh, we're on a train. I guess that is one way of not having to worry about drawing like buildings and people and stuff like that. Uh, hello? Kitty! Here, kitty, kitty! It's still so blurry. Why is it blurry? Oh, we smoking? We smoking? Okay. Evan's apartment, 6 a.m. Okay. Still blurry. Can't see anything. Riveting. <laughs> guess we just pay attention to the sound, see if we can guess what he's doing. headquarters Washington DC 7:22 a.m. Alrighty, here we go another day let's solve some crime all right heaven Tanner Password. Enter. All right, brand new from here. Hello, Mike Trench. Hey, pal. So, tell me, how day number one at the FDI go? Everything you had hoped for? <laughs> Actually, I think it went pretty well. All right. That's what I like to hear. Ah, sorry, buddy. My phone's ringing off the hook here. I gotta run. But hey, great job. And, uh, just, just keep plugging away, okay? I'm okay. proud of you, Evan. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Talk to you later. Hello, sir. Operator Tanner, Agent Pendle has an update on yesterday's case. I'll patch her through in a moment. But before I do, I wanted to let you know that from this point on, you'll talk to the agents directly. Time to cut the umbilical cord. However, as your supervisor, I'll still be in the background monitoring your activity. Oh, I almost forgot. Our cybersecurity department is looking into this unfortunate matter with Hal. You can be assured that it won't happen again. Okay. Of course, Supervisor Skinner. Hello. Good morning, Operator Tanner. Good morning. So you remember Ray Wells, right? Mm-hmm. Of course I remember. So I checked out the address you gave me, but no sign of Wells. Then I get a call from Vice and guess what? Wells was found dead in a downtown parking garage early this morning. Of course he was. 
point blank range. Now I'm working two homicides and it's my first week. Welcome to the FBI, Alexandra. <laughs> anyway, the garage has cameras and I got some footage of Wells. That's the good news. The bad news? I don't have all the footage. Sort of weird, but part of it is missing. Has it been tampered with? I don't know. Looks that way, doesn't it? I don't put much stock into conspiracies, but the timing is definitely suspicious. Mm -hmm. Anyway, think you could take a look. I'm looking for anything that's different between the first and second half of the surveillance footage. Apart from Wells ending up dead and the blood splatter on the pillar. Sorry for the vivid details. Okay. Find something different. Okay, so we're looking for something that's different between the first and second half of the surveillance footage. Well, dead body, there's one thing that's different. Okay, so. What is different? Spot the difference. I've never really good been good with spot the differences. Oh boy, here we go. Alright, so we got... Three cones. Pause and do this. Yes, we can. Okay. It's different. What is different? Okay, well, why is it? Okay, apparently it did not like me doing that. Okay. So, three things. That thing is the same. Is this Ray? Yep, that's Ray well. Alright, so... Could be different. I don't see anything. Wait. Other than the glare, that's the only difference I see, is the glare on the car. There's no light out. The light's out! The light's out! I see it! I see it! The light's out! The light! The light goes out. The light is on at the beginning of the video, but it's off at the end. Yeah, that's it. The light's off. Yeah! The light's off in the second part. Look at that! Give me a sec, operator. I'm gonna check this out. Okay. A very subtle difference. <laughs> well, well, well. I just found a bullet lodged in the light's framework. I'm sending you a photo. Okay. Can you run an analysis and tell me what kind of bullet I'm looking at? Uh, run an analysis. How do I run an analysis? That's not what I want. Oops. Uh... How do I run an analysis? Do I just click on it? Yes, I just click on it. Okay. Uh, the bullet is a... Point forty five ACP. Looks like it's a point forty five caliber round. Forty five caliber? I believe that's what the military and police use. Well, that's something anyway. 
Thanks for your help, Operator. Yep, no problem. If only we had all of the footage. Anyway, I should get back to the scene. Keep digging and see if you can find anything else about our perp. Okie doke. Oh, hello again. Hello, Hal. Look, I have a deal to offer you. One that I think you'll find interesting. What do you mean? You see, we share a common goal. You, me, and the FDI. You just don't know it yet. So, here's what I'm going to do. I'll help you with the Wells case. But, you have to help me later when I ask for it. Do we have ourselves a deal? Oh, I can't do anything illegal. Pindle could use my help, so why would I help a criminal? How could you help me? Um... How could you help me? I have access to the surveillance footage from the garage. Yeah, so do I. I mean, all of the footage. How did you get it? I don't have time to go into the de technical details. No offense, but you probably wouldn't understand anyway. Will you do the deal, or won't you? I need your answer. And I need it now. Oh, jeez. Um... I can't do anything illegal. You won't be. I mean, apart from working with me. The world's most wanted hacker. Oh, jeez. Why would I help a criminal? Because, as I already said, we share a goal. And because, without my help, you and Agent Pindle will never solve this case. Wells' killer will still be on the loose. And sadly, you'll never climb the ranks of the FDI. Pindle could use my help, so... Yes, she could. And you could be her knight in shining armor, Evan. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and put this big, juicy, missing part back in so you can watch it and solve the, this crime. I'll help you if you help me. <laughs> what if someone asks about this? If somebody asks how you got the missing footage, just say the analysis software restored it. It's supposed to be cutting edge anyway, right? So do we have ourselves a deal? We have a deal, Hal. Probably gonna regret that later, but good. Now give me a few seconds to run my script. Oh boy. Oh boy. Please don't install the virus onto the government computer, please. <laughs> Alright. The missing footage has been magically restored. I hope you have your popcorn ready. I'll be back a little later to collect my debt, Evan. Until then. Until then. Alright, let's see what this missing footage is. Aha! So he met up with somebody. He met up with somebody! We need to get the license plates. Right? I think. Can we get the license plate? Okay.
facial recognition. I no see that match. you ran the facial recognition software, and zero matches turned up, operator. Uh -huh. That's unusual. In fact, it shouldn't even be possible. Really? Our FDI databases are exhaustive. I'll flag this issue for later. But go ahead and share the image with Agent Pendle. Okay. I have an image of Wells's killer. Wait. I don't understand. How did you get this? Our software recovered the missing part? Well, this is huge. Thanks, Tanner. I'll canvas the area immediately. Mm -hmm. Maybe someone has seen our Prince Charming. I'll talk to you later. Okay. And thanks again. Don't mention it. Ever. <laughs> I don't know if we just did a bad by doing that deal with Hal or not. Okay. Now, about that debt, Evan. <sighs> okay, let's just get this over with. Good. Now, I'm going to connect you to another FDI agent. Her name is Catherine Andrews. Just listen to what she has to say. Open your terminal and type the following command. Call 187 1998 No secure. Oh, that does not sound good. Um, how do you open the terminal? Terminal. Okay. So, call 187 222-1998 Initiating call Proxy refused to open a secured connection to target IP from this Oh, wait, I don't think I finished it. I think I need to Call 187-222-1998 Dash dash no secure. There we go. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Here we go. Hello, Operator Tanner. Hello. Hal told me that you'd be calling. Um, what's this all about? Okay, I'll try to keep this short. About a month ago, I started working on a missing persons case. Mm -hmm. A woman reported that her husband had been gone for over 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Almost right away, the case felt different. Mm -hmm. Red tape all over the place. An unusual lack of cooperation from my superiors and colleagues. Unanswered calls. Suddenly, the FDI felt like the most incompetent department in the country. After an almost endless game of phone tag, I finally managed to get an appointment with a superior. The plan was to sit down and talk about the case first thing Monday morning. That Sunday night, I'm awoken by a phone call. The woman's apartment has burned to the ground. And the woman, what's left of her anyway, has been found dead in the ashes. Yikes. So then what did you do? Timing sounds a little strange. Could just be a coincidence. No, the timing sounds a little strange. Well, it gets worse. So I started looking into the fire, of course. Mm -hmm. I. I couldn't help myself. Plus, I felt like I owed it to Mia. That was the woman's name. Mia Cole. Anyway, it wasn't long before my superiors found out and pressured me to stop. They told me the fire had been ruled accidental, the result of faulty wiring in her oven. They told me I was wasting my time and precious FDI resources by looking into it, and said if I continued, I'd end up pushing papers in a basement somewhere. But that fire, Operator Tanner, that fire was no accident. I can feel it. Mia was murdered. I just have to prove it. That's why I'm hoping you can help me. How do you know it's not an accident? Go ahead and search them in the human DB. Dead. The husband's name is Sasha. Sasha and Mia Cole. Please. Okay, so S Mia didn't come up, so let's try... 
such a cool. I don't have the clearance level. Just another coincidence, right? Look, I that don't one, know I'm not getting anything. Doesn't want us looking into Sasha and Mia Cole, but we have to, Operator Tanner. It's our job. Who's going to do it if we don't? Can you help me find proof Mia's fire wasn't an accident? I'll try. How can we access their case files? You'll take a look then? Oh, thank you. As far as how to access the case files, that's not really my area of expertise. But you can ask Hal. Oh boy. How can I access the cool files? Funny. I was just working on this very thing. So, it looks like I can't give you direct access to the files. But... I found a bug in the chat. You should be able to inject a query that'll get you in. Just type this. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Um, oh, okay. I don't actually have to do this. Sorry, I don't understand what that means, Tanner. Not in this chat, Evan. In the chat with Andrews. No offense, but... How did you get this job? <laughs> Shut up! I thought I did! Is there a difference between them? Oh, there is a difference between them. I think. Wait, no, there's not. I pushed it. I did the... Okay, apparently I needed the second Hi, one. Being, well, a thorn in the side. You have to admit, Hal gets results. Okay. Alright, let's see what we got. I need to get rid of some stuff here. Okay. Oh, summary. Okay, so the following report was written by Agent Andrews and modified on Redacted by Redacted. Okay, case closed. Death by accidental fire. Catherine redacted on the notes. The fire started on 2.25.92 around 2 a.m. and was successfully contained by 3.12 a.m. Owing to the duration of the fire, minimal evidence remains at the scene. A single victim identified as Mia Cole through dental records, tenant, ten, tenant information, and wedding ring was discovered. The autopsy revealed no anomalies attributing the cause of her death to the fire. The other signs of physical trauma were found. No other signs were of physical trauma were found. No indication of a forced entry or struggle were evident in the home aligning with the findings of the victim's autopsy report. The fire response team's report, referred to reports redacted, concluded that the fire originated from faulty wiring in the oven, a conclusion supported by our investigation. Okay, so we got the ring. Can I check the inscription? The inscription says Sacha and Mia. Okay. The wedding picture. Okay, it's just saying that we can't see her. Ash sample. Whoa. You have opened a chemical sample. We have automatically given you access to the CSLCA data report application. You can find it with the other applications in the top left menu. Please review the user manual relative to the chemical sample analysis process before proceeding. You can find those documents on your personal drive. Documents Kim scan LCA user manual. Okay. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, user manual for that provides guidance on proper operations. Welcome to the user manual for Kim LCA. Uh, designed to provide you with the information you need to safely and effectively use the instrument to perform chemical. Please read the manual and follow instructions. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Open the sample. Let's move this over. Okay. Open the sample in the detected 
PIM scan LCA software and put the appropriate settings for your sample using formulas found thereafter. Start the analysis process. Note that this may take some time. Once the analysis is complete, open the CSLCA data report application and put the results from the ChemScan LCA analysis and initiate the calculation. The CSLCA data report will then return the chemical composition of the sample. What? Okay. Let me just found there after. Okay, start. No, don't start. Oh, just open that back up again. Um. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Here we go. Uh, solid sample. Iron size typically around six. If the material is organic, the ion sun must be set to 3.5 to avoid damaging the sample. So I believe it's on the organic, so it needs to be set to 3.5. Okay. For example, uh, organic. Sample weight in grams blank times 250. Sample weight. Um, are you expecting me to do that in my head? I, I don't know if they're expecting to do that in my head, but I cannot do that in my head. Say so 4.2 times 250 is that's too much. It won't go up that high. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I know what it is. That. I think. Maybe. Maybe not. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. 4.2 times 250 percent would that be no 1050 maybe i really don't know whoops it doesn't do points so can't do that okay um 250 it was 250 so would it be 105? Maybe? Threshold for solid. Wait. Oh, this is a non organic sample. Never mind. So it is 420. I believe. I believe that's what it wants. Okay, for solid samples, threshold should be set to half of the delta V. Half of the delta V would be 210. And then the sample matrix, the default value for the sample matrix is 5. If you're using an older version of that, which is version 0.03, you must... Okay, so that's fine. I didn't get the iron size right. Hold on. Oh, it's non-organic. Non-organic. And you should be five. There we go. <laughs> Sorry, that took a little longer than it meant to. <laughs> I way overthought it. Way overthought it. <laughs> okay. Results. Okay, so now we need... That was that. Now we need this. Okay, so the CV... 
is 901. pH was 6.5. Oh, jeez. 1.57 247 911 1054 and yeah, that's it calculate invalid settings um oh crap What did I get wrong? That's right, right? It, it wants all of these? Oh, I had it at the very, very wrong spot. So... 1.51. Wow, why did I get that wrong? Okay, very top. That one's correct. This is 927. And then this one is... 964? Nine. Nine six four. Evan, you should check the manual to make sure you've entered everything correctly. Okay, fine. What do I do afterwards? How to read the results. The KimScan LCA will give, as a result of the analysis, a frequency response curve and additional sample characteristics such as pH, radioactivity, etc. Those values are going to be used by the CSLCA data report. Okay. Oh, so it goes highest to lowest. Okay, so... Highest to lowest, so let's try this again. Okay, so the highest point is nine two five, and then it goes two four. Four, wait, two, four, five? Two, four, five. And then... One, five, three? And then... It cannot be this picky. 1062. Is that right? Haha, -ha, there we go. Okay, now what? Um. Okay, I got the results. Now what? Faulty wiring in the oven? Um, no. It was gasoline? There were traces of gasoline in the fire. I knew it. Faulty wiring might... You know what? This was no accident. Someone started this fire and killed Mia. 
But why? What are you gonna do now? Maybe I'll end up at a desk in a dark basement somewhere, but I'm going to keep digging into this. It... it matters to me. Why is it so important? I grew to know her. Mia, I mean. With our line of work, you try not to get emotionally involved. Mm -hmm. That's what they teach you at the academy, anyway. Almost from the start. And usually, I can turn the switch off. Um. I learned to do that. Feel nothing. Okay, at first. Yeah, I just never could. She wanted to be a singer, she told me. That was her dream. Was. Not exactly an expert, but she did have a good voice. Really. What's going on? I, I really thought that was my eyes blurring for a second until it started panning out. <laughs> so Mia was pregnant? Are you still there? Uh, yeah, I'm... I'm still... I don't know what happened. Uh, yeah, I'm still here, Andrews. Oh. Anyway, thanks, Operator. Because of you, I finally have proof. Knowing how, well, as much as someone can know how, <laughs> I have a feeling this won't be the last time you and me work together. Probably not. Yeah, I have that feeling, too. Okay. Well, that was interesting, to say the least. So, you found evidence proving the fire wasn't an accident. Well done, Evan. Maybe there's hope for you yet. Hey, I struggled, but I figured it out. The way the FDI has handled the coal case, it's strange, don't you think? Um, it does seem suspicious, yes. Yeah, it does. I just don't know what they're hiding. Or why. Look, I know you probably still don't trust me. I'm on the FDI's most wanted list. I hacked into your computer. I get it. But tell me something. Why would I bother going to the trouble of working with a low-level FDI employee? Sorry. If I didn't have a good reason make my life a living hell <laughs> to earn a few extra bucks I literally have no idea how <laughs> maybe you're thinking about turning me in to get that reward but it's too late you're in too deep uh oh hello operator Tanner can I have a word uh, director Trinch is calling me be careful I will uh, of course, D Director Trench. I see that you've uh, been looking into the database entries for Mia and Sasha Cole. You want to tell me why? Um, I wanted to catch up on the case. I see. In the future, I want you to avoid anything related to Sasha and Mia Cole. It's a closed case. A total waste of your time. And if by chance something else pops up concerning the Coles, and this is very important, you come to me right away. Understood. What's the big deal about them? Oh, there's no deal, Evan. It's just highly confidential. Classified. And way above your pay grade. I'm sure you understand. Uh, I understand, Director Trench. I'll talk to you later. I know that was probably difficult lying to your friend. But you did the right thing. Evan. As a reward, I'll tell you something about myself. Something that only two other people know. The reason I have so much access to the FDI. I used to work there. You were in the FDI? I can't tell you more for the moment, but yes, I was. As improbable as that s seems. What do I do now, Hal? For now? Nothing. I'll be in touch later, Evan. Okay. 
Well, that was interesting, to say the least. This is still Operator Tanner. The same Operator Tanner from before? Yes, sir. Good. You haven't been fired. Nope. I was afraid I'd have to explain this goddamn case all over again. No, we are good. back to where Connie said she took the photo in the desert. Mm hmm You remember, right? Where she said this, um, flying saucer supposedly landed. Mm -hmm. I didn't find a flying saucer or any aliens breathing their last wheezy breaths or anything like that. But I did find something else. Something disturbing? You could say that. You could definitely say that. I found stones. A bunch of stones lying there on the surface of the sand. I'm no uh, geologist, but they look funny to me. Like they've been moved. Put there for a reason, you mm -hmm. know? So, I call it in. Because I'm sure as hell not gonna dig myself, Tanner. Not in this suit. A team arrives an hour later, and they start digging. Sure enough, under one of the stones, they find a body. Oh. Advanced state of decomp. They dig under another stone. And lo and behold, this time they find an entire skeleton. Hmm. Turns out, we're standing on some sort of desert graveyard. They found a body and a skeleton? Yeah. Messed up, right? And judging by the size of the skeleton, it belonged to someone young, Tanner. Real young. How many corpses are out there? Hard to say. But I counted more than a hundred stones. If they're all grave markers, well, I'll let you do the math. Look, I won't beat around the bush. The medical examiner has finished a preliminary report on the skeleton. And they found what they believe is a photo of the victim in the sand. Buried there by the bones. Never seen that before. Any chance you can take a look at all this and get me an ID, Tanner? Uh, well, I can try. Let me send you the files. Okay. I need a good stopping point because I've been doing this for a while. Hard to access the satellite out here in Roswell. I mean, uh, dry field. Roswell. Okay. Looks like it went through. About goddamn time. Okay. Um. Let's see. I, I'm curious what this autopsy. Mm, the skeleton appears to be female. Estimated at mm, nine years of age. Starting the examination now. Initial observations show well preserved and intact bones. No visible signs of trauma or damage. The subject is missing her left incisor. The rest of the dentition looks good. No decay or disease is present. Moving on. Here's something interesting one of the metacarpal bones on her left hand. The metacarpal three has a slight curvature. You don't see that a lot. So, to summarize, the subject appears to have been a female, approximately nine years of age, with a missing left incisor tooth and a slight curvature in the metacarpal three in her left hand. Based on the level of decomposition, the body appears to have been buried for approximately six to eight months. Further testing and analysis is needed to determine the cause of death. Who are you? Henry Jenkins. I don't have necessary clearance level to view his profile. Why do I not have any clearance? That's not fair. Okay, message on the back. Welcome to the facility, Gabby. You are in good net hands now. Sincerely, Dr. Jenkins. Okay, so Gabby. Hmm. 
Okay, so we found Henry Jenkins. Uh, so would the body be Henry? No. Gabby. No. Yeah, that looks like it could be the first name. But I'll need the last name too. Yeah, I figured. I'm thorough like that. I figured. Um. Nope, I keep pushing the wrong button. I want applications. Human DB. Uh, Gabby. Enter full name. Um, would it be Gabby Jenkins? Nope. Okay, let's get... Oh, wait. I have already looked at him, and I can't find him. Um... Uh... Skinner, help. Jenkins. That name rings a bell, operator. I... Check the other cases for anything possibly related to him. Maybe there's a clue in there tied to the girl. Well, that was Connie Moore. Killer doesn't have a face. Name list. Connie Moore. Gabby Bruce? Hold on, Gabby Bruce. There's a there's a Gabby Bruce. Ew, go away. I need this. Gabby Bruce. Age nine. There we go. Her name is Gabby Bruce. How did you find this, Tanner? Her name's on a list from another case, like Connie. Just when you think this case can't get any weirder, that's exactly what it does. <laughs> but I need concrete proof it's her. Okay. Got anything else in your bag of tricks? Um, crap. Okay, um... Yes, this. Gabby also has an unusual bone growth. I'll be damned. Nine years old, Tanner. Breaks your goddamn heart. Right? What the hell is going on out here? And what's the connection to Connie? Okay, the examiner has just finished processing the second body I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. The one in the advanced state of decay. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Adult male, early 60s. Ah, they got an ID on him. Quentin Spence. Wanna see if that name is on your magical list, too? I can. Uh, Quentin Spence. Well, it's not one of the circled ones. Yeah, right there. It is. Right there. It's just not one of the circled ones. Yeah, he's right there. So there's definitely a link. I see some of the names have been crossed out. Can you figure out what that business means? Yeah, good to know. Um, okay. I think we can figure this out. Oops. Davis He's still alive. Toby Hood still alive. Uh Bev Boyer missing. Let 
Nicholas Herring. Missing. Means missing. Crossed out means the person is missing. Looks to be about a hundred names like that. That number matches the stones. God damn. And if I was a gambling man, I'd say the circled persons are still alive. Mm -hmm. Like our Connie. There's something else about Spence, Tanner. What's that? They found him buried in a lab coat. With some, uh, you're never gonna guess. Floppy disk sewn into one of the pockets. Mm. Remember what I said about this case getting weirder and weirder? Yeah, it definitely I'm is. everything your way. Okay. I need to clear out my thing. I've got too much stuff open right now. I will open stuff up when I need it. Okay. There you go. Now the second disk, password protected. Open that second floppy disk and give me an address tied to Spence. Something I can look into. I'm getting a little restless with you doing all the work. The <laughs> operator program. Oh. Okay, open the floppy disk. Give me the address tied to Spencer. Okay, how do I... What? How do I... How do I unlock it? Goodness. Hold on. Hold on. How, how do I unlock it? Wait. To unlock the full potential. Okay. So he wants an address. But can't I just get the address from Spence? His file? I... I'm not sure how I'm supposed to unlock it. FMP1138? No. Yes, please. I have no the idea. The symbols and file names written on the second floppy disk look to be there for a reason, Tanner. I suggest checking those two files for clues about the password. Focusing on the symbols. Maybe keep those two files open and see if you can do something with them? Suggest checking those two files. What? Focusing on the symbol, so... This? I don't think this is what I want, I think. Okay, um... Nope. That's not what it is. I'm really stuck here, Skinner. The key and lock icons, Operator. They must be important. I'm aware I of that. Combine them to reproduce the schematics on the second floppy disk. My hunch is that the content is not very important. Just the part with the icons in the two files mentioned. FMP 1138 and Res 2. I got that. <laughs> Com 
combine them to reproduce the schematics on the second floppy disk. I don't need you. I need Virtuko. You. Okay. Honestly, it kind of looks like... Why did the music suddenly change? That was weird. The music suddenly changed when I moved this. So... Oh! Wow, I... Okay. Wow, that took way too long. That... That's a tricky puzzle right there. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Okay, cool. Oh, goodness. Hi, music ramping up. If you're reading this, it means I am no longer living, and that I have been buried in the dry field desert like the other subjects. I implore you, whoever you are, to share my story with anyone who can make things right. My name is Quentin Spence. I was head of operations at the Biome Faculty. I am writing this letter because I am about to resign from a job that one cannot simply resign from. As per protocol, I will most likely be sent to the desert burial site with all my belongings. I deserve this punishment. I am sick. So sick of everything that we have done supposedly in the name of science. If you have found me, then I am assuming you have found the others too. Every person buried here in the sand is a Project Eve test subject. Eve was led by Dr. Henry Jenkins. I am not trying to shift the blame onto him. I bear my share. I bear my share of responsibility in this matter. While our intentions were noble, at least in the beginning, I now see that we went too far, and I am ready to ready and willing to face whatever punishment awaits me in the next world. You have found this document, but perhaps the contents of my lab coat pocket remain undiscovered. Perhaps they could not crack the password necessary to open the floppy disk. Maybe they assumed the floppy disk contained only my research papers. Regardless, what truly matters now is you. You have the power to stop this. Biome Facility 22 East Border Street, Bedford in Nevada? I think that's the envy is Nevada. Please do not be as cowardly as I was. Okay, so you want the address. Okay, Spence versus the biome facility is here. I'll let it go to your operator head, but that was actually somewhat impressive, Tanner. Uh, thanks. The address you sent, it's not far from here. Okay. I'll check it out first thing in the morning. Okay, Tonight, good to know. I think I'll help the team exhume the rest of these bodies. Screw the suit. God help us, Tanner. God help every single one of us. Contact me tomorrow, Walker. Oh! That took way too long. Okay. And with that, I am going to definitely end it there. <laughs> oh, goodness. We gotta go and watch our blurry whatever to go home. Why they put this in here, I'm not sure. Does it have relevance to the story? Like well, you need to do something about it. He's poking around, asking too many questions. He's going to expose us all if you don't rein him in. Yes, his shift is over. Yes. Alright. Yeah, fine. We'll talk later. Bye. What? Oh. Uh, excuse me? Director? Supervisor? Person? Oh. 
Are you going to off me? Am I going to be sent to the desert? I'm going to be sent to the desert, aren't I? Bet you anything I'm going to be sent to the desert. Meow. Feed the kitty. Meow. Gotta feed the kitty. But seriously. Skitter's behind everything? But then again... Our friend Mike was also in that. He said, do not look into them. I shouldn't have told the director about the how. I shouldn't have told the director about the how. Oh, goodness. I don't remember if I told the director about how in the demo or not. Or did I even talk to him in the demo after the hack? I don't think it did. I think it opened directly up from there. Yeah, pretty sure. So I don't think I should have told the director about how. Okay. All right. All right. Yes, boot up so I can do my outro, please. Well, I guess I can do my outro anyway. <laughs> Alright, so this was uh, the, I guess you could say second part since the demo was pretty much the first part. And I'm going to leave it there for this time. And I am definitely going to be playing this because I am intrigued. I am very curious to know where this is going. Conspiracy in the government. Isn't that just like the real life? <laughs> Oh goodness, I am so enjoying this, and yeah, the puzzles probably were more simple than I made them out to be, and I apologize that it took me longer than I probably should have, but whatever. If you like this video and want to see me do more of it, then hit that like button. Um, I will probably continue it, whether I get the encouragement from anybody or not, just because I'm enjoying this game, and... I would love to do more on it, but let me know if you want to see more of this. Hit the like button if you do. Subscribe if you want to see more videos from me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!